Hello, everyone. Um, this is our virtual lunch hour. I hope you're uh, joining us today on our Facebook page. I'm Jillian Graber, Executive Director of Protect PT. Um, last week we had some technical difficulties, so we're using a different software today. Um, but I'm hope I hope you guys can join us and, and join in the conversation. This new software will allow us to do some other things that we couldn't do before, like see your comments and reactions in um, live time. So. Uh, we're still working out some of the technical difficulties with this new software and, and learning it, but uh, we are very happy to have all of our staff here. Say hi, everybody. <laughs> so if you're joining us live, please let us know that you're here um, and, and listening to us. So, um, Anne, I'm going to have you go ahead and start with what you wanted to talk about last week, and we're going to go from there. Sound good? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Hi everybody, I'm Ann LeCure. I'm the Project and Outreach Coordinator for Protect PT. Um, I'm just going to give some updates about some things that have been going on uh, with oil and gas during the COVID-19 uh, shutdown in Pennsylvania and, and in the country. Um, so kind of within Pennsylvania, the Mariner East Pipeline that runs across 17 counties in Pennsylvania for a liquid natural gas pipeline for export to make plastic has received at least 17 waivers to continue working um, during this time. And as part of that waiver, they are to be maintaining the social distancing and recommend and orders from the governor. And right now that hasn't been happening. Workers are congregating together. They're visiting shops. They're not wearing masks. Um, they're not social distancing, and these sites, uh, mainly uh, we've been hearing about sites on the eastern side of the state, are having, um, these sites are right next to homes and apartment buildings and, and where kids are, are. It's not like out in a field somewhere, it's right next to people. So it's putting the people of those counties at risk, and De um, Delaware and Chester County have written to the governor together to ask that they cease work at the pipeline, citing those same reasons, that it's unsafe uh, for residents and unnecessary. It's not life-sustaining. Um, statewide, their House Bill 1100 had been um, taken to the governor. This is a bill that would provide subsidies for businesses who want to come into Pennsylvania that are in the petrochemical business. So it would bring more petrochemical, meaning um, gas and oil production within Pennsylvania uh, rather than going the opposite way and acting to protect our climate and bring in renewable energy and solar energy. So Governor Wolf had vetoed that bill, and now it's possible I mean, that it could go back to the, the two houses for um, an override, but it's looking unlikely. But we're asking people just to keep an eye on that and to let their legislators know that they do not want them to vote for an override on HB 1100. Um and then just one more thing, uh, the EPA has rolled back regulations during the COVID-19 emergency, allowing, in quotes, any non-compliance. So they can go ahead and have water pollution. This includes like drinking water facilities. There can be uh, pollution of drinking water, pollution of air, um, and there's nothing, they're not going to get fines. They're supposed to self-report. And the thing that's coming up with this is that Incre increased pollution is going to make the impacts of the virus worse for people because it exacerbates their already existing condition, health conditions. So cardiac or respiratory conditions that are exacerbated by air pollution then make them more sensitive if they have the virus, which will increase uh, mortality. So um, thank you for listening. And um, if you support our work, just kind of, we hope you'll donate to Protect PT and help us keep uh, keeping you informed. Thanks. Great. Thanks, Ann. Um, all right. And then I'm going to talk to you guys about some of our um, legal um, things that we've been that we've been that have been ongoing for some time. Um, so we have uh, several different legal cases that are ongoing right now. And last time I mentioned our newsletter. These are all in our newsletter in this little portion up here talking about legal advocacy for your constitutional rights. Um, so I just wanted to give a quick update about where those are right now. Um, so uh, we, um, we had petitioned some time ago, um, uh, I guess it was late last year, 
of the Supreme Court to hear our case um, for the challenge to the Penn Township Ordinance. This is our substantive validity challenge. And that challenge uh, challenges the mineral extraction overlay that overlays on top of Penn Township combining industrial zones and agricultural zones. Uh, and those of us that live uh, either in or near Penn Township or in this community understand that those agricultural zones are also home to many, many people. Um, so our agricultural zones are zoned agricultural, but they are also light residential as well. And um, our, our, the way that the community is set up um, really has residential and agricultural zones really kind of intertwined within it. So we feel that the kind of lumping those things together to allow natural gas development in everywhere in the mineral extraction overlay, which I should, should say is 60% of the community, um, we feel is unconstitutional. It violates our Article 1, Section 27 rights um, to clean air and pure water as set forth in the Pennsylvania Constitution. So we are still fighting that. Um, that is not a done deal, as some people might think. Um, and so um, we are coming up on our fifth year anniversary. And so we have literally been fighting this fight for five years. <laughs> um, so it's been a really long process, but we're really um, happy that we can continue to be able to do that for our community and your support makes that happen. So thank you very much. Um, we also have cases, we had participated in the Titan hearing in Murraysville um, and there were some conditions that were proposed and were, um, were um, made as a part of that um, new well pad development. These are conditions that are stricter than anything we've seen before. And we're really happy that Murraysville um, had the sense to impose those conditions. And uh, we want to uh, let them know that, um, you know, we are we are happy that they impose these conditions. We feel that this should be something that every well pad uh, should have like conditions like um, widening of, of these back country roads that that to me just makes sense uh, that if you're going to have these large trucks making 90 degree 90 degree turns on back country roads that are not equipped to even handle sometimes one vehicle let alone a giant triaxle that that's something that you should consider um, they also have a noise ordinance which is which is something that uh, Penn Township lacks at this point. So we've done a lot of noise studies and, and in that hearing um, I actually testified on our noise studies and uh, Kathleen down up down there <laughs> we'll be, we'll be <laughs> we're like the Brady Bunch today we'll be talking a little bit more about our noise studies. Um, we also have ongoing um, some other efforts uh, some other legal efforts, like uh, we're ch still challenging the Gaia and Metis well pads that are in um, kind of the off of Denmark Manor Road and, and near uh, the Shrams Farm. So those are well pads that are in, they're in a little bit more of a rural community, but still, again, we still have many residential areas around there. And uh, these people will be impacted by the air pollution, uh, the noise pollution, and the water pollution. Uh, there's also a, a large impoundment um, freshwater impoundment that's that's um, slated for that area as well. So that is what's going on with our legal fights. Um, we are also at the Environmental Hearing Board um, trying to um, get, um, get the uh, DEP and uh, APEX to realize that the emergency evacuation plan that it's called the ERP, so Emergency Response Plan, that they submitted, that they actually submitted um, after they submitted their initial permit and um, is inadequate. It has uh, many residences actually missing from the half mile radius, and that's actually a well pad that is a quarter mile from my house. Um, so we're at the Environmental Hearing Board. We're hoping that we'll get some some type of movement with that case soon. And um, that's all I'm going to say about our legal cases. But I'm going to go ahead and kick it over to Mary so she can let you know what she's been doing. Thanks, Jillian. Hey, everyone. So we just wanted to share a little bit about um, some upcoming events and stuff um, we've been working on 
just trying to, tr you know, transition to um, this very uh, virtual world right now. So we've got some fun virtual events coming up. As Jillian mentioned, we're coming up on our fifth year anniversary. So um, that's April 27th. And we'll be having a virtual happy hour to celebrate. So you all are welcome to join us for that. Um, we'll be posting the link in the chat where you can uh, RSVP and get more information on that. Um, and as we're coming up, you know, on our five years, we're also just kind of reflecting on where we've been in the last five years and, you know, where we're trying to go from here. And uh, you guys are the reason we're around in the first place. You know, we started with just a group of community members coming together because uh, people, you know, people had concerns about the development coming into the community. And so um, we're still, you know, very much a grassroots organization, uh, but we have grown in that time. And so we just wanted to thank everyone who has been with us, you know, whether you've been with us for one year or, you know, two years or five years or, you know, even just a couple months. Thank you for your support. We really appreciate it. And uh, we're continuing to um, try to, you know, find some ways to help, uh, you know, keep everyone involved and in the loop. Uh, so this month, kind of in, you know, in tandem with our celebration of our anniversary, we're also going to be launching a member drive. And that will just be a time where we'll be inviting everyone to, you know, if you haven't already, to become a member of Protect PT. And so what that kind of means, um, all you, it, it's not um, expensive at all. It's just a $10 annual uh, donation for a individual membership. Um, and basically what that does is it uh, helps us maintain legal standing. So as Jillian was just mentioning with all those legal cases that we have going on, we need members to make sure that we have the legal standing to continue advocating for your rights in court. So uh, your membership is really important. Um, so if you have not already, uh, you can go online on our website, protectpt.org slash membership, and uh, you can donate online. Uh, if you're more comfortable, you can donate through the mail. We still accept checks. We're just a little bit slower at processing those right now. Um, and uh, if you are in a position where you're um, not able um, to give financially right now, we are also more than happy um, if you would be willing to just volunteer two hours of your time in lieu of a financial contribution for your membership, that would be super. Uh, we really appreciate our volunteers. Uh, you guys make a huge difference um, in our work. Uh, so yeah, there will be some more coming out on the member drive shortly. Uh, we are also in the process of uh, finishing up some touches on the new website. So that will be going live shortly. And once that's up, um, there should be some more information on the new site uh, with some different things with the member drive. We have a cool giveaway that we'll be telling you a little bit more about later um, and some more fun virtual events and stuff like that. So stay tuned for all of that. Um, but just a couple other events that are coming up. So for Earth Day, for those of you who don't know, Earth Day is next week. Um, and so in celebration of that, there is a virtual Earth Day teach-in um, April 19th from 1 to 4 p.m. And so it's just going to be like a mixture of there are going to be um, speakers and music and other content. Um, and that we have, it should you should be able to find it um, on Facebook on our events. Um, there is a registration um, link on there as well. You can register and get more information. Um, and then there's also uh, the youth are going to be doing a climate virtual climate strike on April 22nd. So that's going to be um, led by the Fridays for Future Pittsburgh youth. You can also find that on Facebook as well. So those are two fun ways that you can get involved um, in celebrating Earth Day. For those of you who didn't know, it's actually the 50th anniversary of Earth Day this year, so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so if you um, missed anything with the events or you have any questions, uh, feel free to email me. My email is just mary, M-A-R-Y, at protectpt.org, or you can also check out our Facebook or our website for more information on these events and how you can get involved. Um, so yeah, so please, um, if you have not already, please consider becoming a member. Um, and yeah, please join us for some of these fun virtual events that are coming up. And with that, I am going to kick it off to Kathleen to talk a bit more about what she's been doing with the monitoring. 
Thank you, Mary. That was a great summary of all of our wonderful virtual events we have coming up. Uh, very excited about our fifth anniversary. I know Jillian has been working nonstop for the past five years and more. So thank, thank you, Jillian, for all of your efforts. Uh, so for so for those of you who don't know, I'm one of the environmental scientists, well, okay, the environmental scientists for the organization. And we are doing a temporary halt on noise and air monitoring due to the COVID-19. We are not going to be going out and placing new monitors. We do have some current air monitors in place, so those will continue. And if you have any questions about that, please feel free to contact me. And if you'd like to sign up for noise or air monitoring in the future, it's Kathleen at protectpt.org. We're, we're hoping to get lots more data this summer when we can get out there. So for the time being, we're doing some in-depth analysis of some of our longer term studies, which is very exciting. We had some uh, studies over in Elizabeth Township that ran from baseline through development through production. So we can get a good solid view on what it looks like for the entire process and be able to use that for comparison and let just let people know what's going on. Uh, we're also looking into some new equipment. We've had some people who have had issues with vibrations. So we're trying to find some equipment that will work better with lower frequency sound. So lower Hertz sound. So we're talking with a couple of companies about that. And eventually, all of this data will accumulate into a giant, wonderful database that we can then look at and get a nice, comprehensive view of baselines regionally all over the area. And the more people we have participate in our baseline studies, the more complete that picture will be. So if anyone's interested, again, Kathleen at protectpt.org. We'd be happy to have you sign up and uh, get you involved. So thank you. Awesome. Yeah, and, and our, our last speaker is going to be Tam. Um, and then I'll speak a little bit before we go. Uh, Tam is uh, our newest, the newest member of our team. So Tam, um, what is it like working for Protect PT? It's awesome. <laughs> It's a, uh, it's like the best environment um, that I could have fallen into. It's like this wonderful group of highly communicative women and um, everybody just has such a passion for the mission and is, is just inexhaustible when it comes to getting work done. So it's a really, really nice place that I've landed in and I'm really happy to have it be part of my home. So it's, uh, it's, it's been really nice. And I feel like I came in at a, at a really good time. There was a lot going on, um, you know, just to kind of help get my feet wet to sort of get to know a lot of the members and a lot of the programs. Um, I had a little bit of, you know, a little bit of time to get that done. So yeah, that was really great. Um, I got to know a lot of the members because I made some of the calls that we were placing to the people that have been or are members uh, in the past or, or are presently, just to check on them to let them know that during this time, we are still working every day. We are still answering phones, email, checking in on social media. Um, we are not going to be stopped just because there has to be social distancing. So if you have something that it, you, you think needs attention or if you need some information for not just this, but not just like our general mission, but even other things, you know, Jillian is like an absolute rock star, has all these different, you know, um, contacts. We can, we can help you find some information if you need it. Um, it doesn't have to just be about our general mission of, you know, clean air and clean water. So we want to make sure that everybody has what they need to the best of our ability and just, just help you get through this time. So that's why we're looking at doing some of these virtual events, which should be a ton of fun. Mary is a super, super planner. So these are going to be done really well. And um, I think it's going to be, you know, a really nice way to continue 
the community that I see around Protect PT, um, even if we can't all be together in person, we can be together in spirit. So yeah, I think I, I'm very excited about that. And um, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I'm a part-time worker, so I spend part of my time in the office and part of the time at home, but now I'm spending it all at home uh, with my kids and um, trying to get that all worked out. I know a lot of you are doing the same thing, trying to figure out how to make your calls and do work and, um, you know, have your kids in the background wanting a snack at the same time. Um, so, you know, let us know what things are like for you, how, how they're going and, you know, uh, how you're managing the transition to being home all the time. If it's different for you, if not, then maybe you're adjusting to having a spouse home all the time, which could be just as challenging. <laughs> so yeah, we're, we're, um, we're just keeping on with our mission and, um, uh, hope that you all are staying safe and that you're supporting each other. If you know of someone in your community, please check on them. If you have older people or if you have people with anybody that might be at risk, just check in on them, you know, give them a call or if you, if you can email them or Facebook them, just make sure that, that the people around you um, have what they need and are, are staying safe and, and, uh, Maybe widen your circle a little bit right now to bring in some people that, you know, you might not have come into contact with every day because the best way to get through is going to be together. So I hope everybody has a great day and you're all staying safe. And uh, I'm really happy to be a part of this wonderful organization. Back to Jillian. <laughs> Thanks, Tam. <clears throat> yeah. And, and like Tam said, you know, we, like really quickly, like I said last time, uh, we had our virtual lunch hour really, really quickly after COVID-19 hit. Uh, Anne and Tam and Mary and Kathleen, we were all kind of in this different mode where we were trying to <clears throat> promote safety, security and quality of life for, um, you know, in, in this, this other kind of realm that we haven't really had to deal with <clears throat> before. So with that, um, that really kind of fits into our pro our promote PT mission. For all of you that that don't really kind of know or understand the fact that we actually have two different branches to our organization. We have Protect PT, which is what we were known most for um, up until this point with with the mission of safety, security, and quality of life for the protection from unconventional natural gas development, better known as fracking. <clears throat> but we also, when we incorporated uh, five years ago with some really smart folks in the community, uh, we saw a bigger mission and we saw um, a more long-term goal that we wanted to have and, and long-term impact that we wanted to have in the community. So when we incorporated, we actually incorporated under Promote PT. Uh, and Promote PT's mission is is somewhat under overlapping uh, with Protect PT, but also somewhat very different. <clears throat> so the mission of Protect PT is, is, or Promote PT is also to ensure safety, security, and quality of life, but for mo a more sustainable and communal future. So really looking at ways that we can bring, uh, whether it's a sustainability through energy sources, different alternative energy sources through um, different ways of life. Um, you know, one thing that I think COVID-19 is really highlighting uh, in the, in the communities and other nonprofit leaders that I talk to is the uh, social inequities that we have within our communities. So there are folks that aren't going to have access to internet, there are folks that aren't going to have access to technology. And so um, those folks are going to feel very isolated. So like Tam said, you know, check on your neighbor, <laughs> see if see how they're doing, offer to buy them groceries if you're able to go out, you know, if you're not in a high risk group, and able to go out, um, please protect yourself still, um, you know, but but also realize that um, there are other people in your community that that might be willing to help you. Um, I also want to mention too on our website for Promote PT Inc. Um, it's just promotept.org. Uh, we have a resource page and that resource page has lists of um, educational resources for children. Um, <clears throat> 
resources for housing, resources for food that, that Anne put a tremendous amount of time putting together for us, um, as well as, uh, you know, we sent it out uh, a couple weeks ago to other folks in the community asking them to contribute um, to, to, you know, share with us other resources that they had. Um, the United Way has uh, resources as well. As well. Um, there's a 411 hotline um, that you can call. And so all of Westmoreland County is really coming together, as well as Pittsburgh and Allegheny County, to bring resources to the communities that 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 need them. So we want to be there for you if you need those things. So we are still, you know, you're still able to call us if you could call us, you could email us. Um, our phone is forwarded every single day. So one of us, well, with the exception of the weekends, but <laughs> if you call on the weekends, you might just get someone too. <laughs> um, but you can always call our, our phone. You can leave a message if you don't get us directly, but you will get to somebody and we will get back to you because um, we want to be there for our, our, not only our members who support us all the time and have supported us for the last five years. Thank you very much to all of you, but also for the folks that, oh, thank you, 211. Also for the folks that, um, you know, may want to become members, you know, maybe this situation is making you realize how the importance of the, the social equity within our communities, the importance of sustainable energy. Um, I When I was on a call this morning with Westmoreland County, they were talking about a lot of uh, folks are having a hard time paying their electric bills. Um, you know, so if there were other ways that we had set up in our community for us to be able to have um, better microgrid systems, you know, these these would be things that in the future um, could be better managed um, from from a, an individual standpoint. And um, so we just want to encourage um, you know folks to start thinking about that as well as municipalities. There are a lot of municipalities that might be um, in, a, in a position right now where they're having a hard time. Maybe they don't know how to work virtually from home. You know, maybe they don't know how to host the meetings like we have done, um, the webinars or, um, you know, the, the local meetings with your council people or your, um, your commissioners. I know Penn Township is hosting meetings online, but I haven't heard anything about Trafford. Um, I think that Monroeville is also doing some things. Uh, I know that Murraysville is doing some stuff online. But, you know, if if these are things that municipal leaders need access to or need education in, we are happy to, to help out whenever, you know, at wherever we can help. Um, so please just drop us a line and let us know how you're doing because we, we want to know how everybody is doing and dealing with the situation. Um, and please become a member. Like like Mary said, we have some really, really fun stuff going on this, this month. And we want to encourage everybody to become a member. If you're not able to be, to contribute financially right now, we completely understand. Um, and uh, we, you know, like, as, like Mary said, there's lots of opportunities for people to volunteer. So, um, and we're able to do the training. We can train you on how to volunteer and how to contribute because we have a lot of exciting projects we're working on and we want people to be involved as much as possible. Um, one more thing I want to say before we get off because we're almost, I think, out of time right now. I want you to be able to get your own lunch and <laughs> stop looking at our faces <laughs> and, and eat something. Um, but I want to mention too, we are going to have some interns soon. Uh, next month, we're going to have several interns. These, these are youth people from... These are these are folks that have been working um, at different schools uh, throughout the country, actually, because this because of COVID-19, it's actually really extended our pool of potential candidates um, because we really just don't know how much work we're going to be able to do in our office. We do know that we can still work virtually and we can still work online. So that's pretty cool. We were able to really extend our branches uh, to, to include people um, from, you know, from all over to apply for some of our internships. Uh, we still will have and we're still planning on at some point getting back to our office as soon as the, the coast is clear from the governor and we get that that OK. Um, but but for now, we're planning on moving forward 
and uh, working like normal, but from home and virtually. So um, we're really excited. Uh, we're going to have a couple of environmental science and research interns to help out, help Kathleen with a lot of the monitoring she's been doing. We're going to have some um, waste, um, I'm sorry, some, some water quality data analysis interns like we had been having um, to, to analyze. They, they had in the past analyzed water around the Beaver Run Reservoir, and uh, we're going to have some new projects for them to do um, this coming summer. <clears throat> we have a social media intern, and she's actually right here from Harrison in Harrison City. So she'll be helping Mary out with uh, a lot of the social media stuff. Uh, we have a great legal intern. I'm really excited. Um, we always have a ton of legal work, uh, research and writing um, that an intern can do and really help to, to to nurture their um, their education and hopefully further their career as well. <clears throat> um, so, um, you know, we're we're excited and to have these interns, and then we will be introducing them probably in May. If you like these virtual events and if you want to, us to continue them, we want to hear from you. Um, we want to to know how you feel about this and. Um, <clears throat> So please email us or, or hit us up on Facebook um, or Instagram or Twitter. We're, we're trying to go everywhere um, to be able to get people the resources and also hear from people in the community. So um, please uh, contact us by phone, contact us through our, our, our website, however you like to do it, contact us and let us know maybe what type of virtual events you'd like to see. Um, maybe there's something else that you'd like to see that we didn't think of. <laughs> um, so we, we are gonna have some exciting events coming up, so please look out for those. Um, does anyone else wanna say something before we go? No? <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you guys for, for hanging in there with me through the technical difficulties. <laughs> and uh, we will see you next week here on Thursday. Thursday's our virtual lunch hour um, every Thursday at, um, at noon. And next week, we're going to have some, some special guests. <laughs> so please join us next week and see who, um, who can, uh, who's going to join us and, and tell you more about Protect PT in the last five years we've been working in the community. So have a good lunch, everyone. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.